house. You know, we worked too hard to be in this house. When my grandfather would work his government job. He would clean houses. He would have served dinner parties. And I got to see that and the relationships that he built with Georgetown as black and white over the time, you know, growing up. And, um, you know, my grandfather died. We continue my aunt. You can't sell this house. Because I saw what happened to my family that did sell, that were tricked out of their properties, given a little bit of money, little or nothing, for their properties, mm -hmm. which is happening in D.C. I, I feel like I'm going to talk to the audience and talk to the camera. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. But, you know, were tricked out of their properties who, they don't even often, some of my um, cousins don't even want to come back because it's so painful to come mm -hmm. back to Georgetown and what Georgetown was and, you know, what it meant to them. And so I see that. It don't, I mean, believe me, when I see the value of my house, it gets tempted. But I'm like, <laughs> my mother would turn over her grave and come back. They're like, you know, where does somebody do so much meaning? Because those memories are there. And, yeah. and the significance African Americans made in Georgetown, we weren't just the help. We were doctors, we were lawyers, we were business owners, we were community leaders. We were involved civically. And even if opportunities weren't presented to us, they made sure that they made them available and, you know, and weren't mm -hmm. going to stand for certain treatment. Right. And so because, you know, my own great-great-grandparents great didn't like how they were being treated at, at Trinity Catholic Church, so then they raised mm -hmm. money and fought to start a Epiphany Catholic Church, and so it means a lot for me to continue to go to that church. And so when you hear these stories, I mean, this wasn't for nothing, you know. Right. They, these families wanted to establish themselves, mm -hmm. and that's why it's important for me to continue that. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. That's great. I think we deserve it. I noticed that you are, um, uh, you have been an ANC commissioner. Yes. And in that capacity, how were you treated? Oh, wonderful. My friend is right here on the front row with me. Oh, of course. Of course, Mr. Sterl. Uh, no, I think um, it, it was meaningful to be the first African American or woman um, African American right. resident on the ANC. Um, I wanted to make a difference and, and to make sure things were marked as being historic. So that's when I had a supported um, Rose Park, Friends of Rose Park, with getting the tennis courts renamed mm -hmm. for the Peters sisters, because people don't know their story and who they are. And I also I wanted... I had a book. <laughs> and I also wanted to make sure um, encouraging Jack Evans, who gave a lot of money from the city, to um, Mount Zion Cemetery and to, to try to keep up with the maintenance, which still needs support and, and donations, and please look into Mount Zion Female Union Band Cemetery, because the significance of that cemetery versus um, the cemetery, why am I going blank, the cemetery on R Street. Oh, uh, 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 Oak Hill. Oak Hill, Oak Hill yeah. Cemetery. Yeah. Oh, okay. Two very different cemeteries, right. which you see the maintenance of Oak Hill Cemetery, and you see right. the, you know, the conditions of um, outside. And so I used my platform to spread the word on, on that mm -hmm. and just anything that I could feel in my position to help with getting legislation the city support. So that's why I used my, my Wonderful. And, and I noticed you were also, I don't know if it was at the same time, you were a co-block captain for the Citizens Association. That's um, safety still am, the Just, safety program. Uh -huh. So I'm the one that sends all the emails, the updates. And what's oh, happening. I see. What's happening? Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, good. That's great. So everybody needs to know various things that are happening. Um, do, do you feel that your immediate neighborhood, you know, P Street, has gotten any support from the Citizens Association? Yes, the Citizens Association. Um, has um, almost every year, um, for at least the last six or seven years, done a similar panel or program oh, yeah. about um, the African American residents that are still there or still come back or still contribute to researching. Um, I feel they're very supportive. I feel the ABC is very supportive. And this was the ad for that. Yes. Um, so they definitely help spread the word. I think it's just people just not knowing. If you're not, so people that are involved in CAG and involved in AC are aware of the history, or many, most of them, many people. But it's, you think of Georgetown, I have to always explain myself. Just when I meet people on the street, I live in church, oh, you're wealthy. No, I'm not. I'm a public school <laughs> in Bunk, Florida. You know, my family's been here a long time. And so then I go into the whole history, and this was a vibrant African-American community, and what that means, and why 
what happened to the African American residents? Why are they no longer there? Mm -hmm. um, so I, I, I just feel like I have to, you're going to get a little history lesson when right. I start talking about George. Because yeah. I don't tell people, and people don't know, the people who lived all their lives and have no idea about DuPont Circle, Foggy Bottom, Tenley Town, Georgetown. Um, you, you go on and on about communities there. Capitol Hill. That he heavy black populations. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. Well, as I said, I went to Georgetown, and you know, we came out of the main campus at 37th Street. We never saw any, any black uh, residents mm -hmm. until we got on the G2 bus mm -hmm. toward Howard. And when we got to your block, that's when we saw black residents. And it was, we weren't uh, allowed to go to Georgetown University really? or the hospital. <sighs> the university is one thing, the hospital is totally wrong, mm -hmm. <laughs> definitely. Uh, um, well. well, why did that change? Uh, I would say uh, in the 19, maybe 60s, huh? probably, I'm, I'm not sure. Well, by, by the time I was there in the 60s, we had black like, like, students, definitely. Well, Georgetown was a battleground community for desegregation in D.C. Because Rose Park was actually the first desegregated public park uh, in, in the district. Wow. So. In the district. Oh, was it really? Yeah. And they played Nobody sports teams that. together. <laughs> yeah, it's still to this day, you know, that's kind of the... Uh, the thing about Rose Park is it's one of the few places you can go in DC and actually see like white residents and black residents playing basketball yes. and tennis and whatever together. together. Right. Uh, well, let's move on to a quiet member of the panel, a Ms. Ramona Green. <laughs> She's not quiet, I promise you. <laughs> I know. I know. I know. <laughs> anyway, Ramona, um, when did you buy your house on P Street? How long ago? I think that was in 2000. But when I met you, I was at 1068 Thomas Jefferson. Oh, right. Uh, and that was uh, in 99. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And was that it commercial? Was, that it was, was a dry cleaners. It was, yeah. Yes, it was. Um, so we took the sign down, and I converted it, and then got D.C. government back in so that my taxes would be lower. <laughs> he came in so fast because he couldn't find parking. <laughs> you you know, made sure that he couldn't find it. <laughs> I did. I arranged that. No, and I got my, my zoning changed, and therefore my taxes were lowered. I see. What about when you sold it? You sold it as commercial property, I'll bet. No, I wasn't that smart. <laughs> but I found that was a FISBO for sale by owner. Oh. I bought that for $350,000. Mm. Wow. Uh, made a. Uh, Updates to it, and I sold it a few years later for five fifty. Good for you. Right. Good for you. And then you came to P Street, and you bought uh, your house on the twenty seven hundred block. I never planned on moving into the P Street house. Monica's mother had was into and that happening <laughs> along with the rats. Uh, the, <laughs> the, the rats. It just got to the point with the because we were near the canal. Oh, over on Thomas yeah. Jefferson. Yeah. And then yeah. there is uh, the Potomac right. River. And one year, the river rose, as you may remember, and it came oh, all right. the way up to our house. Oh, My terrible. basement was flooded. It was terrible. Oh. And, uh, flooded those buildings it's, on K Street. Yes, the they were all flooded. I yes. remember that. Oh, so the sewage water. Too. The sewage water came mm -hmm. in. It, it was <laughs> awful. Thankfully, with my house, it receded on its own. But I still had uh, a terrible cleanup job to right. get rid of the germs. Uh, and shortly after that, I, I decided I had enough. Mm -hmm. I just, <laughs> it was just enough. But it, Tad worked with us, though. So an interesting, interesting thing about Ramona moving in was having grown up in Georgetown since the mid-'80s, uh, I think you're the only black family to move in yes, to right. Georgetown. That's, right. <laughs> that, that's what I was going to ask you. I was going to ask you. I don't that think so. I can't home. think of anybody it's, else. There was Raleigh's father, as I have said, I courted that man in writing, sending notes <laughs> <laughs> for two years. Were you aware of that? <laughs> I, I wasn't involved. <laughs> <laughs> I introduced his father to Saktis, and, and that helped the situation along. But, uh, you know, he didn't trust realtors because 
between realtors, developers, crooked politicians. Mm -hmm. Blacks would just shoot out, you know? And, and, you know, in the back of my mind was, please leave quietly, but go. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that was the mentality. And mm -hmm. uh, so I finally had a bright idea of mentioning to him that we had the same financial planners, Joe and Janice Davis. Mm -hmm. And then the door opened up. He listened to me. I uh, had the opportunity to let him know that I wasn't going to flip this property. I was going to keep it for the family, mm -hmm. most especially for me. But um, he said, okay. And not only then, after I bought that, he offered me 2708 Peace Street. I'm 2712. And I said, you know, I have been on my knees before the ANC, Historic Preservation, CAD, the Fine Arts Commission, just to work on my house. And that was one reason why blacks couldn't go through all of this. It, it could, you can't, you have to have money to go, it's very expensive to go before all these boards. And um, so I, I decided, especially after I got protested about putting in a driveway, because my house is on P and it backs to Poplar. There were already parking on Poplar, it was, it was there. But some of the neighbors on Poplar protested me. Mm. And so here I go again, costing me more money. So I hired an architect who was tall, black, and with dreads. Is <laughs> that the main qualifier? That was the main qualifier. That's right. Okay. Deal with me now. So anyway, we won. We won. And I have a brick driveway. Oh boy. And uh, at one point, I, w I wanted to add a porch, tear down the old porch, put up a new porch, and that was protested. So I didn't finish it. Mm. I let the neighbors look at that crooked porch unfinished for about a year. Mm -hmm. And then I finally finished it. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's, it's been a journey, mm -hmm. to say the least. It's, it has been a journey. But this is Jessica, who's here, supposedly yeah. filming. Mm -hmm. and, uh, I think she is. She good. Is. <laughs> And uh, she has enjoyed living in Georgetown. She's a public school student. Mm -hmm. um, she gave, she went, she graduated from Hyde, as did her brother, who's 26. Mm -hmm. And she's at Hardy now. She gave a presentation last week to sixth grade pre-selected girls about mm -hmm. Black Georgetown. Uh, I'm very proud of her. Very, very and yesterday she did a testimony before the D.C. Council for the first time huh. about uh, Jellof's field being leased to Moray mm -hmm. and the British school. And our kids have to travel beyond our own neighborhood field to practice and play mm -hmm. sports. Yeah. So Not she, right. with three other female Hardy students, were very successful and um, making their presentation and from the mouth of babes. Mm -hmm. So yeah. hopefully, I think we will get that. Well, Murray's already out the door. Oh, okay. oh yeah, they, they've already contracted to be elsewhere. Mm -hmm. Chevy Chase, yeah. Mm -hmm. So we are, we have to uh, bring up our children mm -hmm. to keep the march going. Exactly. Understand the past so that you know what you have to do for, the, for today mm -hmm. and for the future. Mm -hmm. And that's why she's here today. That's great. Wonderful. Thank you. Um, let's move on to Vernon Hicks. Rick. 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 I'm sorry. I'm going to call you Hicks because I knew someone named Vernon Hicks. Um, so, and, and when we spoke, you said that your family moved in the 1940s. No, yeah, out of Georgetown. Yeah. Uh, they moved. Uh, my mom and dad were both uh, uh, born in Washington, raised in Washington went to uh, Armstrong High School, mm -hmm. which was the uh, black school that was back during the Saturday period. It was Dunbar High School, mm -hmm. Armstrong High School, and Cadoza High School. Those were the black high schools. None of them close to Georgetown. Mm -hmm. uh, and, uh, but they moved into Georgetown, they married and moved into Georgetown in the mid to, 19, mid 30s, mm -hmm. mid 1930s, and I was born in 39. No. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Does anyone believe that? That is correct. That is, <laughs> is what does. That is correct. Uh, and uh, that was uh, during the war, 
the war was starting. Uh, and uh, so uh, I have sisters, and they were born at Freedman's Hospital. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, that was the black hospital where uh, blacks went. And uh, so I was born at home. 1404 26th Street, Northwest, <laughs> apartment number four. Well, and, uh, <laughs> yes. It's a, it's a landmark. <laughs> <laughs> right. uh, and the building is still there. Uh, and uh, I, it was uh, when I was born there, uh, I had uh, cut, my father had cousins who lived in the building next door which was 14 or whatever, I can't remember what the address is. But they came over and helped birth me, okay, next door. And, and it's a little courtyard in between. And then uh, Dr. C. Herbert Marshall mm -hmm. came around, mm -hmm. uh, Ryder's <laughs> grandfather, and, and certified my birth. And he was our family doctor, okay. When my sister, my oldest sister, was 12 years old, she babysat Riley's father. Uh, I'd love to hear uh, about that. <laughs> Not babysat <laughs> But um, And then in 19, uh, it, was, it was a one-bedroom apartment. One-bedroom, living room, kitchen, one bathroom. And so it was uh, my uh, two sisters and myself, mom and dad, so it was a little crowded. Mm -hmm. Well, my mom was the uh, secretary for the uh, Civic Association, and Dr. Marshall was the president. And so Dr. Marshall had several properties, and he had a property up at uh, 1726 18th Street Northwest right at the corner of Riggs. And so in 19, uh, about 1946, 47, 48, somewhere in there, uh, they were trying to get us out, get the folks out of Georgetown. And so uh, we went, we moved into the house and rented it from Dr. Marshall. I see. And, uh, but we still stayed in Georgetown. I mean, we lived on 18th Street then. But we walked daily back and forth to church, to the playgrounds, and to all those mm -hmm. things. Uh, I knew uh, her mom very well, because we grew up, she was a little younger than I am. Uh, but uh, so I knew all of them. And I believe now, is your house below where? Uh, where Charlie's house is. Next door. Yeah, we're, we're neighbors. Yeah. On the south, I mean, towards 27th Street. Yes. Yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. But uh, up the street, there were black folks who lived there, the Gaskin family. Mm -hmm. Come towards us. Mm -hmm. yeah. They're, They're all over this book. Mm -hmm. Right, yes. right. Mm -hmm. And uh, so mm -hmm. they had a son who was a good friend of mine. And mm -hmm. on the other side of, uh, on her side of uh, P Street, they had, uh, those were where the doctors and the lawyers and, well, in that whole block, mm -hmm. you know. We lived down in the, not middle class, but not the lowest class. And then behind them was Poplar Alley, oh, yeah. mm -hmm. which is now a popular place, but it was Poplar <laughs> Alley. <laughs> uh, and it was, as she mentioned, it was one of the most rat infested yes. uh, places. And then there were other alleys in Georgetown, or re really down below K Street, one was, we used to call it Clix's Alley. And it was down uh, by, below the canal, down in there somewhere. Okay. Yeah. It, uh, but when I lived in Georgetown, I went to school at uh, Phillips oh. Elementary School, which was the black elementary school. I went to nursery school at First 
Baptist Church, which is at 27th and Dunbar, and it is still there. Mm -hmm. And next, on the uh, upper side, the north side of us on 26th Street was Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. So the black churches were Jerusalem Baptist, um, uh, First Baptist, Mount Zion, uh, um, and, and Epiphany, and then it was the one on uh, Alexander Street. Street. Uh, yeah, Alexander Memorial. Yeah. And that's the one that's gone. They, that's the one that's gone. Well, Mount Zion, and I'll go into Mount Zion if you want me to real quick. Of uh, course. Uh, that's why Mount you're Zion here. Was, <laughs> Mount Zion was established in 1816. It uh, came out of, uh, it was called then uh, Montgomery Street Methodist. And it was down at Olive Avenue, I think, which is, uh, I think it's, is it still called it's still Olive called, Avenue? And, yeah. and around 28th uh, Street, somewhere around uh, in there. Uh, and uh, uh, we had to sit in the balcony. Blacks had to sit in the balcony. They were slaves and some free slaves. And they moved the, uh, uh, then there was about 125 people who decided we just did a documentary mm -hmm. on that. And uh, it was just played a couple of weeks ago. Mm -hmm. uh, and it was about 125 people who decided that they were, weren't going to live that way. And they uh, came away and they established a church called the Little Ark, which is at 27th and P Street, around in there where the 7-Eleven is now. Okay, uh, and then uh, that they that place burned, and at, in the meantime, we could not have black ministers. We had to have white ministers, uh, and uh, we have records uh, from 1930s and before where you would see gone away, ran away, taken away. Uh, people were taken away, and. We have a cemetery up at 27th and Q, right on the other side, uh, near where uh, the Dumbarton House is. And we would, uh, they, they, they would hide, like they had a vault, they had built a vault where they could hide, where they, not hide, but they would put the bodies there in the winter mm -hmm. because the ground was too uh, frozen to dig. Well, we would also hide slaves in there. And because what was right behind it was Rock Creek. Okay? And so the slaves would hide in there. And then uh, they knew to go north uh, because of the moss on the trees. Okay? So we had uh, many to escape or come through Mount Zion. Uh, the present location where we are was built in 1880 to 84. Uh, I am the chairman of the board of trustees of all of the property for Mount Zion. I've been there, look like 99 years, but since <laughs> the, the mid 80s. So uh, I'm also uh, on the board of the cemeteries. And, uh, but uh, we have tried to, we are in the process of maintaining that, uh, that property. And one of our uh, great members who uh, contributes a lot to us is Dr. Page, who is here with us. Uh, and, uh, but, but the uh, church is, uh, you know, all the parishioners, there are none who live in Georgetown. None. The one who did, she passed. Just in this Catherine, Catherine Bowman. Catherine Bowman. Mm -hmm. Bowman family was another big family mm -hmm. on Peace Street. Still there? Yeah. Still there. Yeah. <laughs> and Janice Davis, that was mentioned, is there. Her daughter. Her daughter. Her daughter. Yeah. And so, uh, it the the church uh, we are right now, uh, we have just received. Uh, the opportunity to have a grant from Sacred Places, and it's uh, it's a million dollar uh, 
I mean, it's a $200,000. Like right. This is a program of the National Trust for Trust for Yes. Who owns yeah, this right. property. Right. <laughs> and um, we, uh, uh, it's a $200,000 grant, and we have to batch it. I mean, we have to give 100000 and then they give us 100000 So we're in the process. I've been on the phones and on all <laughs> kinds of things with them on that. So uh, that that is... How, does, uh, how, does someone, how do they donate to that? Uh, well, they uh, we have to... Uh, oh, well, you can donate... Um, let me pull out my pocket. <laughs> 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 but, well, yeah, you can go to our right website. It's uh, Mount Zion UMC <coughs> dot DC. Yes, that's something. Yeah, it's something like that. But you can, Mount Zion United Methodist Church, Georgetown, because there are other Mount Zion churches, uh, Methodist churches, but Mount Zion United Methodist Church, Georgetown. Um, we had, we got our first female black pastor about eight years ago. And we followed up with another uh, female black pastor who is equally as interested in the history. And uh, so she's been working very closely in keeping things together there. So I'll stop there, because there may be questions. No, 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 but no, I, I just wanted to say, you now live in Potomac, and you drive all the way from Potomac. Absolutely, absolutely. I've never, I have, That's well, during, during the 60s, uh, I went in, I was in the military, the uh, U.S. Air Force, and then I came out and went right to work for a major Fortune 500 company, Xerox. I was one of the first blacks there. I managed there and I helped to write the Xerox's affirmative action program back then. And I would travel back and forth. I was commuting back and forth from Washington to uh, Stanford, Connecticut. Stanford, Connecticut right. And I was staying in <laughs> Norwalk, Connecticut when I was up during the day. So. Um, you never called me. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and so I, I was away from the church for a while because I was, you know. Oh, traveling and what have you. So I uh, came back uh, around the late 70s, early 80s. And so I've been on the trustee board since then and, and working with it. Um, and so, uh, you know, we would, like I said, we would walk from 18th and Riggs Place on Hall Street mm -hmm. to Georgetown, to the church, uh, to the playground. Um, to, to Monica's family, you know, her mom and all of us used to get together on Sunday and have a party at her mom's house. <laughs> <laughs> uh, That's where I get it from. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, but both, uh, yes, and I still I live in Tacoma. I've been uh, the mayor pro tem of the city of Tacoma Park. I was the first black elected in uh, Montgomery County, Maryland. Uh, and uh, and I served there for 10 years and also as mayor pro tem of the city. And uh, so I've been on a number of boards and all, but still it's back to Mount Zion and my family still goes there. That's great. So. And when you're going there, which car do you drive? <laughs> well, Tell I don't drive the cars just briefly. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, it, it, and, then, and was it you who oh, asked me? Yes. Yeah, Elizabeth asked me. Uh, my my uh, email address <laughs> is g.goldwing at verizon.net. <laughs> <laughs> and so she asked me, and, and, you know, that must have some meaning or something. I thought it was military. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's right. <laughs> I have a DeLorean. Remember the Back to the Future oh, car? Yeah, yeah. 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 With the doors. I bought it brand new in 1981. Well, so I've had it for 40 years. Well, my son and I are working on 
things like hoses and all that. Mm -hmm. that needs to be replaced. Mm -hmm. But the body is still beautiful. Everything is perfect, you know, except that we're doing doing that work uh, on it now. It's great. I, I want to see a picture of it one of these days. But but anyway, we we uh, we we have one more speaker, and he has lots to say. Always do. <laughs> where, where do you want to start? <laughs> oh my God. Let's move on to A. Raleigh Marshall. And I have a few questions for you. Um, you come from a very distinguished family of doctors. And I've already mentioned how Chris and I both knew your grandfather. Um, uh, tell us about some of your experiences as a teenager in your Yeah, it was lonely. <laughs> <laughs> was, uh, you know, the changing of the, uh, uh, the landscape of the neighborhood over time. Mm -hmm. So I grew up with what I described as commuter neighbors. They were neighbors that were not going to stick around for a while. Mm -hmm. uh, they would buy a house. Usually one of the you know, black families had passed away and they had multiple kids. Mm -hmm. And then there's the issue of how do you deal with one valuable property when you have more than one mm -hmm. kid. So... Um, so very often those houses were sold, and you'd have a realtor move in who would not, not even bother to like introduce themselves, and they would quietly do renovations in the home. <laughs> and then as soon as the, uh, what was it, five years or something for the tax uh, consideration, um, they were gone. So I didn't you know, expend any energy trying to get to know them because I knew that they would be leaving, and they also didn't expend any energy to be part of the community. So. Um, that combined with, you know, my dad's knowledge of how, uh, you know, the, the city was made to be the bad guys to evict a lot of the Georgetown residents, and then the realtors were the ones that profited from that, you know, was, was where that sentiment comes from. Um, but yeah, so, so these people were flipping those houses. These houses were not people with uh, children, generally speaking, so there was not a lot of neighborhood children to play with. Um, you know, my best bet was to go to Rose Park and find some adults to play tennis with, <laughs> or play basketball with. Uh, and, uh, and you went to Wilson? Yeah, so I went to Hardy and Hyde also. Hardy? Uh, <laughs> or Hyde, Hardy, and then... Hyde was a different... Wilson, Wilson too. I went to Brown, that's all. You said you went there. Yes, I did. Wilson Tiger. Yes. We used to have a lady on our board who was in the first graduating class from Wilson. Oh, wow. But you, when you went to Hyde, it was quite different from today. I, Have you seen it? I haven't seen it recently. Oh, there used to be beautiful. an abandoned house next to it. No, it's gorgeous. <laughs> it is, it is gorgeous. Yeah, Monica did a lot of work on it. I mean, not Monica. Not Ramona. Ramona. Ramona did work. So, um, you know, so I had these, these neighbors who, instead of, you know, trying to engage with the community, their primary concern was protection of uh, their real estate investment. So they often became, to be frank, nosy neighbors. The uh, reason why Ramona had all those problems she described is that's a big part of the reason why. Um, I have these problems too, like Georgetown is famous for anytime you want to try to work on a property or something. They shut it down. Yeah, they shut it down. You get stop work notices, happen to Hank too. Um, and uh, so, so it was a very strange environment because I did see kind of the last vestiges of that Georgetown community, because, you know, Ms. Callaway was still around when I was a kid, um, Ms. Mitchell, um, what was Ms. Callaway that used to do the people watching, right? She would sit on the bench. Um, yes. Um, yeah, yeah, so, yeah, she would sit, sit on the bench on Peach Street every day, just watch, just watch everybody. <laughs> every street needs a person like that. Yes, yes, she was, she was the best security system we ever had, nobody got broken into. The Datsuns are still down there. Um, and I, I used to help uh, Monica's parents with, uh, she would take these large grocery shopping yeah. trips and then she would call me to, to help her. But yeah, then you saved the dinner. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's always food and, and a lot always of money food involved. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and as a boy, you know, my dad kind of still made sure that I played the role of the neighborhood yes. uh, teenager. So when it snowed, I was out there shoveling <laughs> snow. <laughs> 
to do a lot of houses for free. And then, uh, <laughs> uh, you know, oh, so. Well, that, I, I don't know about the houses for free. When I was a kid, there were a lot of us, and we had to battle about who got the good one. Yeah. <laughs> well, I didn't have to battle. There's no, no other kids. Yeah. I, I just, you know, before a storm would come, I'd say, hey, you know, if you wait, <laughs> Don't forget I'll go, I'll get to you. you right. know, and Javon took your place. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Javon was a replacement. Your brother. Yes. Yeah. Oh, really? <laughs> and then um, I actually remember Javon pulling you around in the, I have a picture of you yes. being pulled around in a recycle tin. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's very in, in the snow during one of the snowstorms. Um, so it, it, was, it was, you know, yeah, so, so there was this weird, you know, like, like I said, I, I grew up with a concentration of the last kind of remaining uh, Black Georgetown families that were still around. Mm -hmm. uh, unfortunately, just over time, you know, we lose them one by one, and now there's hardly anybody left. Um, on Sundays, you see all those families come back. That, that's, always been, that's always been the norm for me. Uh, you know, there's nowhere to park in Georgetown on Sundays. No. So there's a couple people parked on, you know, like corners, and, and the police just kind of knew not to go hand out tickets that day. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, so. Um, but, but let me ask you, um, when you, you are now in Virginia, mm -hmm. why did you keep your house? Oh, interestingly, uh, and this is, you know, something we kind of struggle with today. Um, my father originally actually intended to just sell everything in Georgetown that was owned by the family and leave. Um, I convinced him to keep the family house, the, the 2710 property that had you know, been four generations down now. Um, and I was 14 when I convinced him to do that. I was either 13 or 14. Um, and that was just- convinced my father to do anything when I was 13. Yeah, well, he- How did you do that? He, he thought one of the family elders had gotten in my ear about something. I was like, Dad, I don't even listen to you. What makes you think I listen to that? Like, I was just looking at this objectively. It's like, because I was even seeing it as a teenager. You know, I'd see these people come in and they'd bomb the house and then they would flip it and, you, and, you know, make off like, you know, they'd make hundreds of thousands of dollars, you know, in, in, one, in one deal doing that. Um, so I said, Dad, why don't you do that, essentially? Or just don't, just hold on to it and then I'll do it later, you know, so. But I ended up, keeping the family property. Um, we left uh, Georgetown in 2013. Um, I moved to Japan for four and a half years. And then when we moved back, we just ended up kind of settling in Fairfax because it was a good location for work and stuff like that. Riley, it was two houses together. Three. Okay, and one of them was the dad's office. Yes, or granddad's uh, medical, I mean, that, I mean, that's Ramona's house. house now. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. She has an old medical office. Okay, mm -hmm. and then the house, it was attached, you know, you, and that's where the family lived. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And your aunt in 2708, right? Because mm -hmm. I found her picture in my basement. Yeah, I found pictures of everybody. Yeah, it was beautiful. <laughs> one, of the, one of the great things about your house that, was, that we love was his grandfather had a fish tank in, in the office, in the waiting room. And that was just the greatest thing to go to the office. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Wow. That was smart. That was the part. Yeah, yeah. That was in the part that was the office. Right. Yeah. Uh -huh. And Dora's still there. So, so something else I do want to mention is also, I witnessed a lot of things that were kind of disturbing as a kid, um, specifically around that cemetery. Uh, so the, the Mount Zion Cemetery, you know, from my house is kind of like just up the road a couple of blocks. But, you know, you got that cemetery that's there, and then three blocks the other way you have Rose Park. Mm -hmm. But what I observed was a lot of people would walk their dogs yeah, at the cemetery. And yes, yes. And, and actually, we had a service project recently to try to clean some of that stuff up with the female union band. Um, but uh, uh, that, even as a teenager, you know, I was like, what? like, there's a park right there. Like, like I realize these are not the nicest uh, gravestones, but people would walk their dogs on it, like, very liberally and didn't think anything of it. And it's really and inexcusable, <laughs> considering there's a dog park right there, almost within eyesight. When, when was the last time someone was buried there? 1950. Or so, somewhere back there. Mm -hmm. so there's no one attending the 
pray and pray. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. Finger um, is um, in charge of um, the director of the Mount Sinai Marine Base. Yeah, that kind of takes care of that area. Executive now. director. So if you want to take a tour, if you want to see um, where the Underground Railroad went through, mm -hmm. give money, yeah. help with cleanups, mm -hmm. then um, you know Mount Sinai, United Methodist Church, the Union Band, yeah. definitely look them up. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Sorry. One of the things too that along with them walking their dogs. Uh, one Sunday morning, the police came to the church and gave me a, a headstone that had been taken out of the church. Out of the cemetery. And, I mean, out of the cemetery. Mm -hmm. And he said that what they had done is stolen the headstones mm -hmm. to make cocktail table out of them. Oh, oh, that's terrible. And, uh, you know, so there, there, there was a lot of disrespect. Uh, but we are, we are working closely with Dr. Page and myself and uh, others. Uh, Ma, uh, Lisa. Uh, Lisa and Neville. Neville is on the, we are on the board. And we're trying to get that all straightened out. Yeah, well, one of our priorities is to put a, build a fence around it. Right. Because we, we, the signs are up there, but you can't control it uh, unless you have the boundaries. So that's one of our priorities. Or unless you got enough money to, like that, the neighboring cemetery has a, a watch person that's there. Yeah. There's a lot of money there. <laughs> As she had mentioned, uh, uh, Jack Evans gave us some money at one point. Um, he did. He got it from the city to give it. Yeah. Right. right. Yeah. 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 He was a generous man, but not so much with his own money. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. 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 Right what the, the difference is this, in Congressional Cemetery, dogs are allowed. For our cemetery, is sacred. So we, uh, black cemeteries are sacred. Yeah. I assume the other ones are sacred, but they allow dogs, they have dog clubs, and they pay a fee uh, to, uh, to exercise their dogs and allow them to walk through uh, Congressional. Exactly, that's interesting. Um, yes, ma'am. We've got a question in chat. Um, it says, when I was walking through the Mount Zion Cemetery a few months ago, I was startled to see a tombstone listing the birthplace of the deceased as West Washington. I'm a lifelong Washingtonian, but have never heard that term used before. A little online research disclosed the answer, which is not what I expected. Could anyone please explain the life and death of, quote, West Washington? Anybody? West Washington. Okay. The name, I mean, the first name being West. West Washington. And that was their, uh, oh, sorry, that was the um, the uh, um, birthplace of the deceased listed on the tombstone. Okay. The, yes, ma'am. When Georgetown, you know, was, was sort of incorporated as its own city, sort of a city, yes. um, when wa the District of Columbia, Washington County was formed, but when the District of Columbia became a city, and in 1870, when Georgetown was incorporated into the District of Columbia, Georgetown was frequently called West Washington in their attempt to sort of uh, make it seem more integrated in Washington, D.C. But I was listening, what I was hearing was that was the name of a person. No, no, no. Where they, no, no, no. Sorry, it was the, the birthplace of the deceased on the tombstone. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah. okay. Yeah. Just to piggyback on what you said, uh, we all know that Duke Ellington is housed in what used to be Western High School. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I think that that's a, a term that I, I have never heard West Washington used before, but I do know that there was a Western High School, so that part of town clearly West or Western. Another, another name that you probably have not heard of is Herring Hill. Okay. So Herring Hill is where the blacks live in Georgetown. And the reason it was called Herring Hill is because Rock Creek, under Rock, under the Peace Street Bridge, or Rock Creek would flow, you know, Rock Creek flows yeah. under the bridge there. Mm -hmm. 
and it was kind of deep there. In fact, we didn't, I can remember somebody drowning in there. But they would have the herring run around the spring. The herring fish would be run. And it was so many that people would come out with nets and just scoop them up. And so, it, you know, that was, that was called in the black street. It's a lot of food. I mean, that was fish. For, sure. And, and, uh, mm -hmm. and we'd also pick greens off of the uh, part of the playground. They were called, and, and I, I don't know what kind of green, they called it poke salad. Mm -hmm. And some of you may have heard of it. And my mom and them would cook it, wash it and cook it. And during the war week, that would be dinner. They would be cook. dandelion greens. Well, they, they had dandelions also. But that was for like, wow. <laughs> but, but the, the poke salad uh, was a green, and you, you could pick it up off the playground. And you'd have to get there before the guy who cut the grass, he had a uh, two mules. And the mules would uh, pull the grass cutter, and that's the way they cut the grass. Uh, in, 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 in the neighborhood there at the playground and all. Interesting. I think it's just a gentleman. I don't know your name, sir. Oh, right here? Yes. Cosby. Okay, hi, Cosby. Um, thank you for mentioning um, Western. Raleigh's dad and my mom were one of the first classes to integrate Western, and so they didn't always have a favorable experience right. when Western became integrated. Right. And That's their right. parents... You know, like weren't accepted at like the PTA and they treat them. But so the, the pocket of African American students is very small and they remain very close. Um, was their experience yeah. We had that we had that terrible experience going to uh, when they integrated in fifty four we were that first class, they moved about a hundred of us from Armstrong Black School to McKinley. And uh, the white students moved right, walked out, and they, you know, they protested. And, uh, finally, D.C. told them if they didn't come back to school, they would, uh, you know, they were going to dismiss the whole group of them. So uh, they came back, uh, but uh, we, we couldn't have a prom. We couldn't have any of that when, when I was graduated. So. Discussion. I was giving a, 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 a couple times I gave a public tour of, of the cemetery and I had a group out there once. This is 10, 10 years ago, 12 years ago. And I'm at the burial vault. I'm talking to the group and a woman stops me. There are 40 people there. A woman stops me and says, this is not a burial vault. My ancestors were, are buried here and this was a smokehouse for the fish that came out of the creek. Wow. Now, I'm not going to challenge a woman whose, whose ancestors are buried there. So I sort of pulled a, uh, uh, yes ma'am, <laughs> one of those. So I would love I ever run into her again. 
Can y'all help me out here? <laughs> it, it was the burial vault ever used as a smokehouse? I know it sounds like a crazy question, but there I was stammering because she, you know she stopped the tour, and and all I could say was yes, ma'am. Uh, okay, I did. That's new information for me. I have seen no history of that. Now, they may have um, used it, you know. Uh, Downstairs. Did you know the racks are in there where they lay the bat, bat, bodies on and all of that? She said those were for the fish. This actually uh, reminds me of something um, Monica's, uh, I think your mother told me this about the, uh, so another thing I remember growing up is they had these old Georgetown trolleys that would come up and down Key Street all the time. Yeah. And they would always talk about the history of what's going on. And something I thought was weird was when they would get to Key Street, they would talk about that little, I think it was Pink House? Yeah. The one that's like the half plot. Mm -hmm. So there's a house on our block that's like, I can't, I probably could not lie it. Yeah, horizontally. <laughs> <laughs> across the house. It, it's built on a half plot. So that's what they would talk about. So that gives you an idea of, you know, the priorities of you know the information they yeah that they chose chose to share, but I remember uh, uh, Monica or sorry um, uh, Martha. Martha and Cynthia both were criticizing how like yeah they don't know what they're talking about they have down here telling lies and I don't know where they read that that's not true like <laughs> so so you're not talking about a real trial you're talking about a bus basically full of it's a bus that so looks like a yeah 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 the tour bus yeah. Yeah. Um, we have we had an event here last fall, a fundraiser, and uh, different people gave different items, and I was the lucky winner of a tour to certain black cemetery by Mr. Cosby family. Yeah. Yeah. And I still haven't had it. Hey, that's hey, it's warming up. It's gonna happen. <laughs> <laughs> Cosby is Elliot, our chairman, the chairman of the uh, advisory council here. Is it educated in the city of Columbia? When you speak of trolleys, though, the real deal was that uh, we would get together as kids, the black kids in Georgetown. And back in that day, they had bus passes and streetcar passes. And so one of the great things for us to get together was uh, to get on the streetcar or the bus and ride the length of the whole streetcar line. Like, we would get on the Two Street bus, mm -hmm. and we would ride to, uh, over to Florida Avenue and catch the trolley, the streetcar trolley that was going out to uh, Kenilworth, all the way out to Kenilworth. And that was a great thing, because a lot of the kids, parents didn't have cars. The other one we would do is get on, uh, on M Street, and the car trolley would go, uh, Wisconsin Avenue, turn, go up Wisconsin Avenue, and right there, the guy would uh, uh, take the traction, I mean, the electrical connection out the bottom of it and uh, put the trolley up, and we head out to Glen Echo. Uh -huh. yeah. <coughs> you weren't allowed to go But we would, we would ride out to Glen Echo, and we had to get off the trolley and let them take the white kids to Glen Echo. We had to wait for them to go to Glen Echo, the white kids get off, and then they would take, go past Glen Echo, turn the trolley around a little bit, and come back, and then we could get back on the trolley, mm -hmm. and we would come back in. Mm -hmm. But those, those were rides, and the other way we would go out of the Bonnie Circle, up Capitol Hill. Well, when you mentioned about Capitol Hill places, there were a number of housing up there on Capitol Hill, right? where the Senate and House are, some of those buildings are now, that had outdoor plumbing, and they were black folks. Mm -hmm. You know, when I say outdoor plumbing, they had moon houses, you know. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, and so, uh, you know, we got a chance to ride and see those things. Mm -hmm. uh, and then the great thing at, um, on P Street at, uh, I think it's called Higher Place, right there, between, 20th and 21st. Anyway, yes. uh, there was a, a high ice cream store there. Mm -hmm. And for a nickel, you could get a giant. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, and 
since you had the passes, you know, because our parents, you know, a lot of the parents would get these passes for the week, so we would uh, save our allowance or cash in a soda bottle, and we could get a giant ice cream cone, and then we would walk from there over back over to to uh, 26th Street. Yeah. Wow. So you had a rich experience um, of being an African American resident right. in Georgetown. Right. I just watched it as a child. They were so much, so much older than me. I'm kind of mm -hmm. like wow, but I just kind of grouped with the older people and right. got to experience right. that, that short period of time. But you really had a wonderful experience yeah, that wonderful I wish I, that we wish you know, we had. Right. Um, we're getting, we're running kind of late. Do we have any questions from anyone here? Yes, sir. I have a question. Uh, I don't know whether it's just because of the anecdotal stories we're getting from you folks, but was the black community in Georgetown concentrated in what I guess the eastern end? Because it seems like everybody's talking about 26th, 27th, and P Street was the, where the, the African American population primarily there, and if so, was there? What were the reasons for that? Well, there were there were a few stragglers of places. Uh, when I when I looked at Georgetown, it was from uh, say the P Street Bridge for blacks up to Twenty uh, Eighth uh, Street, okay, and down to M Street. Uh, that was kind of it. Then we had some who lived up like 32nd Street and then some who lived up beyond Wisconsin Avenue. Uh, in fact, one of our church members, Alice Walker, her, parent, her uh, ancestors had uh, a store back up there uh, off the M Street, you know, up there in Wisconsin. But we were mainly concentrated there. And then you had Foggy Bottom which people called Georgetown, but that was not Georgetown. We looked at Georgetown maybe ending at the canal, you know, for blacks. Uh, and then one of the great things that we would consider, you got your rite of passage, is when you walked up to, uh, up M Street and walked the steps up behind the car bar. And what are those steps called? The exorcist steps. Yes. 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 The exorcist steps. The exorcist steps. Exorcist steps. I mean, that was your right of passage. You had arrived when you had <laughs> But yeah, it was kind of concentrated. That was my time. Well, I heard there were a few black families by the university. Yeah, Just right. I'm few. saying a few uh, up past there. And Rita Clark, in yes. her book, River Cross My Heart, talks about the blacks that live west of Wisconsin oh. Avenue, across from the pool. And that's in her book. Both right. At the pool. At both At Boulder Place, yes. Yeah. But you couldn't go to Boulder Place. No. Yeah, you couldn't go. No. Yeah. And yeah. this is Janet. Yeah. Vernon Clark. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Now, a, a, a young lady who we heard about you through was a young lady named Mary Kay Ricks. Yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah. 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 She, she was not Al. She, yes, she she's white. Yes, she is. But we call her cousin. Yes. <laughs> yes, yes. And, and some of you may have knew her husband, who was Tom Ricks, who wrote.